realistic is that? Joining us now from the Fletcher School at Tufts University of Boston is Professor Sung Yon Lee. Thank you so much for joining us. I just want to ask what you make, having seen those images of three Americans who've been held prisoner flying back into Andrews Air Force Base, what you make of this playing nice by Kim Jong-un? Well, we welcome this development, the release of the three U.S. citizens. However, this is no concession whatsoever. None of them should have been detained in the first place. And in the past, we know North Korea has, after a certain period of time, ranging from two months to two years or more, they have released U.S. detainees because the longer they hold on to U.S. prisoners, uh, the law of diminishing returns sets in. So this is no concession so far. Kim Jong-un has really made no concession whatsoever. He has merely stated that he is amenable to holding off on further nuclear and ballistic missile tests. It's almost like an outlaw saying, I'm not going to commit crimes henceforth and being wined and dined by world leaders. Those activities are prohibited under 10 UN Security Council resolutions. But simply by donning a fake smile, Kim has been able to dupe much of the world, yet the fact remains he is but a tyrant still. Mr. Song, why do you think Kim Jong-un has reached out in the way that he has, and so quickly, after racing in previous months to perfect the technology? Because he's seen it. He has learned of it from his daddy, his father, and the grandfather. After a period of relentless provocations and threats, North Korea is very adept at suddenly and very dramatically changing the tune from molto agitato to placido and smiling and calling for summit meetings. And the leaders of the biggest powers in the world always take the bait because de-escalation is the preferred option. And by doing this, the Kim dictatorship, Kim the first, second, or this one, comes to be accepted as a not-so-abnormal, not-so-crazy murderous tyrant, but a global statesman presiding over a not-so-abnormal nation. Beyond image makeover, there's the added benefit of buying time and money with which to perfect his own nuclear posture review. Professor, you sound quite skeptical about the chances that the June the 12th summit will lead to Placido rather than more agitation. Um, how, how would you rank the chances of getting something meaningful in terms of denuclearization of North Korea out of that Singapore meeting? Well, one does not presume with respect to the eight other nuclear states, even states like the UK or France, who face no existential security threat from a neighboring state, one does not presume that it is possible through conventional nuclear diplomacy to get those nations to give it up. But when it comes to tiny, backward North Korea, we entertain the thought, the, the hope, that it is possible. Why? Because North Korea has little else. For the very same reason, however, one could say because they have nothing else except for military power and have to contend with a far richer, a far more prosperous, pleasant, more legitimate Korean state across the border, they are highly unlikely to give it up. So I think we are seeing once again the same old narrative, the movie this is more Rambo 4 than the first one, which was kind of refreshing. And President Trump really faces the danger of presuming that he has connected with the North Korean leader and prone to relaxing sanctions prematurely, as his predecessors have done in the past, whenever the atmospherics change. Mr. Sung, hmm. good to get your thoughts on Rambo 4 and all the rest of the stuff on <laughs> North Korea as well. Great pleasure. Thanks very much.